What's up everyone, Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids and today we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head comparison between this Browning Black Label Shock and Awe Tomahawk and this Mora Camp Axe. and talk through some of the specs on the different items here. First, the Mora Camp Axe. Price is going to run you around $40 or $50 depending on where you pick it up. You can get it in this OD green or you can get it in blaze orange as well. They say it's a practical camping axe with a head of black epoxy coated boron steel. Your blade thickness is about a quarter of an inch, 0.24 inches, which is 6 millimeters. Your blade length is 4.5 inches, that's 115 millimeters, and your total length from end to end, 12.6 inches. The key thing when you compare these two is probably going to be your net weight, which is 17.6 ounces. Uh, I will show you the sheath in a moment, and they do let you know that you have a limited lifetime manufacturer's warranty. Now looking at the Browning Black Label Shock and Awe Tomahawk. Uh, your blade length is two and three quarter inches. Your overall length is ten and a half inches. It's high carbon 1055 tool steel. Uh, it is a black label uh, item, so it is from their tactical line of items. They do have a hand wrapped nylon paracord handle. Obviously, the color is black, and they do note that your Rockwell hardness is between 50 and 55. Here's a look at them both side by side, and you know, as we get into this, this is obviously built to be um, used for more tactical applications, and obviously this is a camp pack, so it's going to be used for more outdoor applications. But I thought I'd put them head to head just for kicks, and to um, you know, just to talk about maybe some of the differences between a tomahawk and an axe, how there's an overlap, but there's also some differences. This one's going to be used as a tactical uh, weapon, and also as like, a small breaching tool. Obviously, with this very sharp um, point on the back, you can bust into things that you can't do with a camp axe. As far as your comfortability, I would say they're both very comfortable. Um, both of them as I held them, I wasn't like, oh, this one's way better, this one's way worse. Both uh, very comfortable, both have an option for um, uh, putting a lanyard on the bottom there. I would say overall, as far as fit and finish, the black label wins. They've just done a really nice job in putting the whole thing together. The Mora is nice, but if you know Mora knives, they're very basic. They're not a lot of flash, but they do the job quite well. A little bit of a seam line on the, um, on the handle and then on the top here there's a little bit of like a little nub there that was just left over from the production process. This paracord on the black label is not meant to be removed. It's wrapped on there in a specific way and then dried and um, yeah it's just supposed to give you extra grip so that's the idea behind that. It's not something you're going to take off and utilize um, you know as for a survival situation or to make a bow drill whatever it is. That's not, that's not what it's designed for. I wanted to show you the sheath on both these items, but in particular on the black label one because it does have this warning that I left on here. It says, warning, read safety instructions before removing tomahawk from sheath. So the way you put this in is you're going to put actually the axe head in first, slide it up, and then sl swing this around. And it doesn't lock into place, but it looks like it's pretty solid. It's not going to fall out. So that's the way you, uh, way you put it together. I guess they've had issues in the beginning when they first put these out with people not using them properly. On the back, they've got this system, and I'll show you what it looks like attached to some Molly. Uh, I did read somewhere they called it a tech lock system. It's not tech lock. It's not from Blade Tech. Um, it's a system to attach it to Molly. That's pretty nice, but just so you know, officially, it's not a Blade Tech system. Here's what the attachment system looks like. You've got this little, uh, these two little nubs here. You're going to press them up, and that's going to release this. Press this up, release that. Now you can see, slide that down into your Molly, close it down, and now it's locked into place. Let's show you what it looks like attached to a backpack. Here's a look at it attached to my VanQuest backpack, and I didn't run it through multiple uh, levels of Molly, but just to show you that it does attach quite easily. And uh, so this would go through easily through two, it wouldn't fit through three. And just based on the size of the pack, this would hang down a little bit, but you could put it on a side, you could put it on either side. And they do, um, they're set up to be the width between two Molly. So you have one uh, set, of, set of stitching here, and your next set of stitching there, so it can slide between these two those two or those two. So again, you can put it on the sides and in various locations on a backpack. Here's a look at the sheath for the Mora. Very simple. It's leather. It's got a snap here. So you take that off and it comes out like that. And then when you want to put it back on, just do it like that. So very easy. And then three little uh, grommets there. Nothing on the back worth talking about. 
As far as the sheaths for these two items, I'm going to give the win to the Browning Black Label uh, Tomahawk here. You can attach it to a belt, you can attach it to molly, just lots of different ways you can uh, attach it to gear. The Mora is very basic, it does the job, but there's no way to attach it to your belt, to a backpack, whatever it might be. Um, you can use like Night Eyes gear ties, I think it was Aaron over at Gideon's Tactical who showed you how to, uh, in a video, to attach this to a pack using gear ties or even to a belt using gear ties. So it's, it's not like it's a huge deal, but a little bit more time and effort went into that sheath than into the Mora one. Now once again, the Black Label's got more of a tactical uh, application that it's built for, and this is obviously a camp axe. But I'm going to show you uh, this one using the back end, piercing some things, and then we'll use them kind of in a similar way as to do some uh, chopping of trees and such. Uh, you know, the reason I, I did this, I compared this one to this one in this review is because, like when you look at the CRKT Chogun and Kanji uh, T-Hawks, the Kanji has a, uh, a spike on the back, and so I want to show you that you could, if you wanted something that had an aggressive, uh, an aggressive spike, it's certainly usable for outdoor applications, wilderness survival, camping, that type of stuff. Um, and even though it doesn't have that flat pommel on the back like this one does, this one's quite small, um, both of them are usable in outdoor situations. So let's show you this one using that spike a little bit, and then we'll put them head to head as far as the bladed end. First thing we'll do is just show you what it looks like to drive this spike into uh, this wood. It's a little bit rotted, but it's still in decent shape. But we'll show you how, uh, how aggressive this thing is. So that right there, that went in, I would say, probably four-fifths of an inch, 80% of an inch, you know, so that's quite a, without a lot of swinging power, that definitely pierced it. So it definitely does the job on wood. Pretty much just for purely destructive uh, purposes, I'm gonna get rid of this old clay pot. We'll use the back end of the uh, shock and awe tomahawk to do it. We're gonna take it to another level of testing here. We have this old school cinder block, really thick concrete, so we'll uh, We'll try to bust that up a little bit with the back end of this tomahawk. The next test for these two items will be to use the uh, cutting ends. And what we're gonna do is chop down some trees. I need to make some stands for my bushcraft camp. I'm gonna be making a raised bed there. So we'll cut down some trees and then we'll do a little bit more detail work to see how each one of these items work. I wanted to show you a little bit of detail work here. This far one out here is with the Mora and then this one's with the black label. So just by the nature of the profile of the blades, the Mora's just gonna work better. Just these tiny little nubs I kept getting from uh, the black label. So just something to be aware of when it comes to more of that detail work. You could also really lock your thumb in on the more and push forward, whereas with the black label, because you have that spike, you can't really lock in in that same way. We'll start off using the Mora, and we're going to be working on a maple tree. I gave a couple chops just to see if it was dead or alive. I do need something that's alive, so that's why we're using this one.
So this tree right here is about two inches across and you saw the more made quick work of that. Really comfortable in hand. That uh, This little curve here at the end really locks your hand in. And I don't feel that same degree of comfort with the uh, shock and awe. Still a nice tomahawk, but I found the handle to be a little bit small for me uh, on the tomahawk, whereas this one is just right. It really feels comfortable. We're gonna actually do some batoning now. Um, you know, if you have an ax and it's got a really thin blade, sometimes it doesn't baton so well, but once it gets up to the handle, uh, that'll kind of wedge apart. So we'll try this uh, try this out. And this is quite hard wood, I'll just let you know that. Well, let's try some batoning here with the, uh, with the Mora Camp Ax. So, yeah, it does a decent job on that. Let's try another piece here, real quick. A little train mitro in the background. Yep, gets the Just job wanted done. you to see that I worked for a while longer with the Mora. I did some more of that kind of axe batoning. I did some chopping, some splitting. And um, yeah, so I got through this wood really easily. Again, very comfortable in hand. Just feels really ergonomic. If you threw a, uh, a lanyard on there to lock your hand in even more, I think it'd just be a great little uh, camp axe. We'll move on now to using the Shock and Awe Tomahawk. What you're looking at here is a pile of all the branches I chopped off the tree. So I chopped up the main trunk a little bit more with the tomahawk and then chopped off all these branches just to show you that I did use it quite a bit. And uh, we're going to head inside into the studio and wrap up our comparison between these two. I will let you know that I, you know, I have used them for quite a bit so it's not just what you're watching on video. I messed around with them for a while just to uh, get, a, get a, a sense of ergonomics, function, all those different things. But let's, uh, let's head into the studio and wrap things up. Let's wrap up here talking about the Mora Camp Axe and the Black Label Shock and Awe Tomahawk. What I'll tell you is that I wanted to just mix it up and do something a little bit different in a review. But, um, you know, actually one comment I've heard from people is that, you know, they're, they're two totally different things. And I wanted to test that out hands-on, really comparing them. I've used Tomahawks before. I've used Axes before. But to put them head-to-head -head and compare them, I just thought that'd be interesting. So, uh, I do feel like it's pretty obvious when you have to use them for a while that they do serve different functions. When it comes to the tomahawk, if I were to pick like two words to describe it, I would describe it as um, strong and just like powerful, effective, damaging, whatever. Um, it's not something you're going to use for fine detail task. Uh, it's going to be built some, something that's built for breaching, self-defense, um, aggressive use. You know, if you got to bust a car window, you got to bust through some metal, you got to get into a building, whatever the case may be, aggressive, aggressive use. You could use the more camp axe in some ways to use the tomahawk, but not nearly as effectively. I mean, this thing is basically one piece of steel, and then they've uh, prettied, it, prettied it up and sharpened it. The more camp axe, I would say, if I was going to say, you know, one or two words, comfortable and um, efficient. So it was very comfortable to use, and it chopped well. It's not, um, it's not going to be an axe that you're going to be, you know, taking down huge trees or something. But as far as a, an axe you could throw into a pack that's lightweight and now you're able to do a little bit more chopping than you normally would with maybe a camp knife, 
um, this is gonna be a really good one I would see this and like combine this with something like the top brothers of tops brothers of bushcraft knife or you know a more bushcraft black something like that take this and add that together and you've got a, a pretty nice little compact kit to do some more of that fine work with the knives and then some chopping work with the uh, with the axe uh, this is the type of uh, item the uh, shock and all tomahawk that if you're building a small you know car bag emergency bag something like that and you want something that's not just a straight up axe this could be a good option for you um, I've got the trucker's friend in mind and uh, I've done a, a video review on that one it's kind of like a small demo tool it's got a blade and a bunch of other things uh, but this is something that I would enjoy or I think it would make sense to put into that bag in my uh, in my car so maybe I'll do that as well this one I'm thinking about actually maybe putting this into my bushcraft bag I've got a very small bushcraft bag that holds a bunch of items and this would actually fit in it I don't think a lot of other axes would even like a hatchet size maybe from like condor or something maybe a little bit too big uh, a little bit too heavy but this one I think may uh, may be joining that kit so um, they're gonna serve different purposes different functions and they both worked well um, as far as you know chopping it's just that I found this one was not as comfortable as the Mora this one did seem to want to slip out of my hand a little bit more and I would say when I was using this one I just felt fatigue much more fatigued much more quickly than I did with the uh, with the Mora but if you know I was in a situation where I had to bust through metal or use it as a self-defense tool I would definitely choose the shock and all over the Mora so there are some thoughts um, if you got questions comments feedback certainly leave them down below when I ask you to uh, like and share this video with other people and uh, as always thanks for checking out our videos here on YouTube please subscribe to everyday tactical vids on YouTube if you haven't done so already like us on Facebook follow us on Twitter check us out on Instagram and Tumblr as well take care